guests. It's now time for member statements. The member from Lanark, from Mac, at Lannington and at Addington. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, I was sorry to hear of the recent passing of a great community leader, William Leo Jordan. On Saturday, I was joined by my colleagues Steve Clark, John Yakabuski, Jack McLaren, and Ted Arnott in Smith Falls to commemorate the life of Leo Jordan, along with Leo's family and many friends. Leo was a former Reeve of Montague Township in my riding. He also served on Lanark County Council and also served as a member of the Legislative Assembly of Ontario for almost a decade. Leo was first elected in 1990 as MPP for Lanark Renfrew and served in opposition as critic for a number of important portfolios, including energy, which drew off his 39 years of experience at Ontario Hydro. After securing his seat for the second time by more than 10,000 votes, Leo served as parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Economic Development, Trade and Tourism in the Mike Harris government. I first met Leo when I became an activist and advocate for property rights in smaller government and had the pleasure of his ongoing support. Leo will be sadly missed by his family as well as the many people and friends whose lives he touched and helped over his long career. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member from Windsor to come see. Thank you, Speaker. As you know, this is Black History Month, and I want to tell you about something we're celebrating in the town of Tecumseh and indeed in the entire region of Windsor and Essex County. This is a story about our rich heritage, the success of the Underground Railroad, the brave black men who served the Crown and fought in the rebellion of 1837. It's also a story about two dedicated descendants of these African-Canadian pioneers, Elise Harding Davis and Glenn Cook. Speaker, during slavery in the United States as property, blacks had no say or control over where or even if bodies were interred. So when the refugee slaves came to Ontario, they established settlements, built churches, and for the first time, these pioneers bought land for their own graveyards. That's the background of this story, Speaker. I live just off Banwell Road, and just up the road and over the tracks you'll find a small five-acre cemetery. All that remains are five headstones, but they tell a story that needs to be told. One stone is dated 1865. Other markers are dated 1870, 1877, and James Ross, 1908. Speaker James Ross was murdered for his pocket change. His murderer was the last man hanged in Sandwich. Speaker, there are others buried there beneath sunken markers on overgrown plots and in dense woodlots. Elise Harding Davis and Glenn Cook have documented their history, and I'm proud to say because of their work, the Ontario Heritage Trust, with the help from the town of Tecumseh, will erect a provincial heritage plaque there later this year. So, Speaker, through you, a salute from the Ontario Legislature to Elise and Glenn for their dedication to this very important project and for helping us all understand and celebrate our shared heritage. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stevens, member from the Tropical Centre. Thank you, Speaker. In January, I had the privilege of presenting the 2014 Community Recognition Awards, Mr. Speaker, recognizing the positive difference being made by individuals and groups in Etobicoke Centre. The awards were presented at my New Year's levy and were awarded to people living, working, or volunteering in Etobicoke Centre who make a real difference in the lives of people in our community. And I'd like to take this moment to recognize the recipients of this year's awards in this House. For outstanding volunteer service to the community, Brian Brennan, Oksana Shercik, Jim Fielding, Bruce Gleason, Barbara Hayworth, Odile Saul, Ted Scott, Florence Tifo, John Varley, Bill Wilson, and Mary Wilson. For outstanding volunteer service to seniors, Dr. Ronald Groshaw, Sharon Bradbury, George Alexandris, Anki Chang, Elizabeth Dichev, Gayesha Pereira, Mary Klamas, Helen Karekas, Lydia Lelick, and a group of volunteers from Etobicoke Ser Services for Seniors Congregate Dining Volunteers. For outstanding volunteer service to the community by youth, Matthew Barrett, Jonathan McAvoy, Kathy Huang, Victoria Lee, Kirby Wong, and for outstanding service by professional staff, employees or employers, Daniel Bogue, Mary Green, Luke Lynch, Rose Wang, Sandy Simmons, and Wendy Samuel. 
Mr. Speaker, the recipients recognized come from a range of ages and backgrounds and contribute in a range of ways, from caring for seniors to engaging youth to volunteering in their parish. They make a difference every single day. Mr. Speaker, I'm honoured to represent Etobicoke Centre and to give, have the opportunity through these awards to recognize those who are making a difference in our community. Thank you to all the recipients for what you do and to all those in Etobicoke Centre who work to make Etobicoke Centre and Ontario better every single day. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Stavitz, the member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Yes, I will. Thank you, Speaker. This week, we're seeing work by both opposition parties to update Regulation 3603 under the Highway Traffic Act and allow utility task vehicle or UTVs owners the same rights to drive on designated roads and trails as ATV owners, something the government continues to stall on, despite all party support. In the wake of more foot dragging, we've seen the member from Tamiskamin Cochrane and later this week my caucus colleague from Perry Sound Muskoka bring forth private members' bills to step in where government has stalled. It was over a year ago, November, November 7, 2013, to be exact, that the government member from Glengarry Prescott Russell put forth a motion to make rules fair for off-road vehicle drivers across the board. We continued to wait for that playing field to be leveled as promised through regulation. Since the mo motion's passing, I've written the minister on numerous occasions asking for the regulatory update that would help Ontario businesses, farmers, agribusinesses, and recreational clubs like golf courses, <laughs> campgrounds, and riding groups make better use of their off-road vehicles. Absolutely. Down in my neck of the woods, New Hamburg's Ontario drive-in gear has been manufacturing the Argo since the 1960s, a vehicle that has a world-renowned reputation for its versatility and capability in traversing difficult terrain. Updating regulations to reflect what is available to safety, safely ride between trails and properties on rural highways will generate greater demand for these Ontario products and, in turn, help create well-paying jobs. Speaker, it's already been a decade too long. It's time to kickstart this needed change and allow for off-road vehicle owners to drive on designated roads, highways, and trails as other all-trade Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to talk about the recent by-election in my city, in Sudbury, and to talk about what could have been. February 5th could have been a day of pride for the people of Sudbury. We could have sent Ontario first severely disabled person or even the first Aboriginal woman to the legislature. You see, Speaker, everyone who cares about Sudbury knows that we've had an image problem in the past. Think about the moonscape. Well, left to ourselves, we could have made history for all the right reason. Electing the very first quadriplegic person or First Nation person could have united all of us together, allowed us to stand proud and say, Sudbury did this, we did this. The media from all over could have come to our city to see how progressive, caring and inclusive Sudbury really is. We could have showcased the Northern Light Festival Boreal, the longest uh, running folk festival. Not only is it bilingual, it is a multicultural event. Or TG Inner Self that works with transgender people, a visit to the Samaritan people, Samaritan Center to see See the corner clinic that is dedicated to care, caring for the homeless people of Sudbury. This summer, the Paralympian, uh, para, uh, Pan American athlete, could have come and made the trip up north to celebrate one of their own and see more of what Sudbury progressive and inclusive and caring community we are. This is the story that could have been. We all know what Thank we got you. instead. Member Stavitz, the member from Angleton Lawrence. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise today with great sadness to relay the story about the tragic death of Elijah Marsh. As you know, three-year-old Elijah was found uh, frozen with no vital signs uh, beside a house in my riding last Thursday. Uh, young Elijah uh, is, uh, to say the least, uh, greatly, greatly missed by the whole community in Neptune, everybody across the country. In fact, I think Elijah's death has struck a chord around the world, his tragic death. And I would like to thank uh, the men and women in uh, 32 Division, Sam Fernandez, the Division uh, Superintendent, uh, who led the search, and the volunteers who came from across the GTA to search for Elijah. I'd like to also thank uh, all the uh, members of the community who are standing with the family right now, uh, getting them through this incredible uh, grief that they're uh, having to endure. And out of this horrible death, uh, 
it's just remarkable the amount of uh, good that this tragedy has uh, elicited from people. I know uh, when I was there the other day, there was a group of students from Dante High School who stopped and said the Our Father beside a little makeshift vigil where Elijah it was marked uh, his passing. So uh, we uh, say to uh, Elijah's family and the greater community at Baycrest and at Neptune that uh, rest in peace, Elijah, and out of your tragic death, you've inspired us all to come together and uh, remark on what is important in this life, and that is taking care of our children. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in this House today to recognize the local efforts to raise awareness on the state of the maintenance of winter roads across Perry Sound, Muskoka. For the past two winter seasons, the conditions have been particularly challenging. Last week, on the day that the Legislature resumed, I tabled in this House a petition containing 2,500 signatures. Today, I have added 250 signatures to that record, and individual support continues to pour in. These individuals are all calling for positive change that will improve the delivery of winter road maintenance and make our roads safer. The petition specifically calls for a return to the delivery model that allows Ministry of Transportation staff to be able to direct the contractor on deployment of vehicles as conditions dictate. Taking into account the amount of snowfall and cold temperatures experienced the past two winter seasons, I believe that the experience under the previous model, compared with the current model, illustrates the need for change. I'm pleased to have the support of many municipalities across Perry Sound, Muskoka. I hope that the government and the Minister of Transportation will listen to municipal delegations at the Rural Ontario Municipal Association, Ontario Good Roads Association conference going on this week and make improvements to winter road maintenance. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Kingston and the Islands. Mr. Speaker, I'm delighted to tell you about an incredible sporting event that was recently held at my riding of Kingston and the Islands, the International Ice Yachting DN Class World Cup Championships. This event is held annually, alternating between Europe and North America. Naturally, the decision on locality is always a last-minute one based on weather and ice conditions, challenging when competitors must ship their boats internationally. Imagine about 100 competitors from 15 countries or more, including Poland, Sweden, Finland and France, poised with all their equipment to descend at short notice on the right place. With eight inches of glass light, ice and clear skies, Lake Ontario was the right place to be and, frankly, Mr. Speaker, the only place to be sailing on Lake Ontario is Kingston, with its reputation of the best sailing in the world. <laughs> At speeds of up to 100 kilometres an hour, ice sailing is not for the faint-hearted. I invite you to look at my social media to see a stunning video of this event. Precision team spirit was demonstrated by the Kingston Yacht Club, Queen Students, the Kingston Economic Development Corporation, and many volunteers. State-of-the-art sport and spirit with the best possible human infrastructure, that, Mr. Speaker, is a typical Kingston classic. Merci, miigwech. Thank you. Thank you. The member, students, the member from Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This past Family Day, I held a free public skate event in our riding of Kitchener Centre at the Kitchener Memorial Auditorium Kiwanis Ring, and I know that many of my fellow MPPs did the same. Much to my delight, I was absolutely overwhelmed by the response. We had hundreds of constituents come out to have some fun with us. Ironically, the event gave us all an opportunity to escape the frigid cold outside and warm up inside an arena where we keep ice. The crowd was very diverse. Some were experienced skaters, whereas others were out there for the very first time. The event was also a great opportunity for new Canadians to get involved in the community, and more importantly, to help them to adapt to Canadian culture. One such individual was named Padha. She's from Burma, and she was lacing up her skates for the very first time as she took part in our communal gathering on the ice.
Having grown up in a family that immigrated to Canada from Italy, I can appreciate the value of any experience that helps immigrants become more accustomed to Canadian culture and climate. The event gave our constituents a chance to not only have some fun and get some exercise, but it provided them with a chance to network and connect with others, which is really invaluable to help immigrants integrate into our culture here in Canada. I want to extend my gratitude to everyone who made the effort to join us, and I'm so pleased at the level of community building that I witnessed. Thank you. Thank you. I thank all members for their comments. It is now